Doctor Who is back on television for Series 7, and for this series I'm going to attempt to review every episode as soon as possible, as soon as I have time after it's come out. So last Saturday was the premiere of Asylum of the Daleks, and so this is the review for that. Welcome. The first thing when they were doing the, the press release and the hyping up before the episode premiered, they were saying that this one was going to be like a movie. Now, it wasn't movie length. It wasn't, say, an hour and a half or whatever a standard movie is. But in terms of production quality, I think this is as close to movie quality as Doctor Who has yet come. They really were in top form in terms of production quality, and perhaps it has to do with advances in switching to HD, computers are getting better, color correction and that sort of thing is becoming more possible on a, for, for a television show. And But in the sense Series 5 and the switch to HD and the, the Matt Smith, Stephen Moffat sort of era of the show, I think the, the production quality in terms of the look of the show has improved substantially. I can tell they're using more shots with shallow depth of field and, and a much more cinematic look. And again, I think that might have in part to do with switching from HD, or switching from standard definition to HD, but also they seem to be doing more with color correcting and lighting and color and the way that the, the sets are, are lit in a very distinct way uh, that, it, in my opinion, it gives a, a definite distinct look to the last few seasons of the show that previous seasons of the of modern Doctor Who hasn't really had and is the show is looking great overall i think that Doctor Who consistently is one of the most imaginative shows on television that is more ambitious and tries to 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 do more than pretty much any other contemporary show that i can think of and they consistently make other shows seem lazy and unimaginable imaginative and they're really like bringing high caliber filmmaking to what had the reputation for decades as being this you know the the sets jiggle sort of show you know the wobbly sets as they put it and so production quality on this episode in particular I thought was top notch and uh, in terms of the writing I thought that the story was good the, the sort of twist was good although with trying not to spoil anything. If you look at uh, Oswin Oswald's room, the room that she's in throughout the episode, it just take a careful look at it and what does it remind you of? Does it remind you maybe a little bit of the inside of a Dalek and especially the way that the uh, in the background there's the, like the lines that sort of if you look at, at a Dalek the part below its neck and then you look at the lines the kind of curvature of the thing yeah just look at the room carefully and it kind of gives you this foreshadowing impression in the production design and again i think that's part of the the, the brilliance of uh, the, the production quality of the show, especially in, in the dungeon scene with Rory. I thought, you know, the look, the um, everything was, it, it worked very, very well. And th there's an attention to detail that's not just um, by accident or anything like that. They're not, they're, t they're doing their best work on this show and it shows and I think that the people working on it really want to make the best show possible and that how often do you get to watch a television show where you where you say like I bet that these people really enjoy what they're doing and are really everyone is really trying to do their best job and takes pride in it because in lots of productions I mean people just show up and they're just like yep I'm doing this for a paycheck don't even particularly care and, and possibly do a half-assed job and maybe they don't maybe they're consummate professionals and always do their best but maybe a little extra bit of enthusiasm makes the difference. Um, I also thought that the acting was very good and I thought that they handled the Amy and Rory 
story part well because to be honest in previous seasons there were moments where it just got over the top um, particularly when you're making jokes about how many times your character has died and come back to life then maybe you've overdone it and there were a lot of previous moments in the show where the, you're supposed to have this big emotional reaction because Rory's died yet again or something's going on and the, I feel like the, the, the dramatics of their relationship sometimes Sometimes we're pushed too far, particularly surrounding Rory's repeated deaths. But in this, I thought it was handled very well, and it wasn't pushed over the top in a way that made it feel maybe a bit forced or inauthentic, or just trying to push the audience's buttons. And I thought the banter between the Doctor and Oswin was was very good. And most importantly, my philosophy of the Daleks is that they should say as little as possible. And so what I appreciated, although the, there was the one, uh, what do they refer to him as, the, the, Dalek, the Dalek Prime Minister, who was not in a traditional battle armor case. He, he spoke a bit, but he sounded more like Davros. Uh, it reminded me of Davros talking. And then they had the, the human... Um, Dalek puppets that did a lot of the speaking as well, and I think in, in my philosophy of, of the Daleks, they should speak as little as possible, and when they do speak, it should be something menacing and, and something like exterminate, you know, it should just be exterminate or some variation thereof, and they should be seen as sort of... Um, cutthroat brutal and and this episode did that very well I mean that's most of what you heard from the Daleks was just exterminate or you know the menacingly saying doctor that that sort of thing um, and prolonged dialogue with Daleks in my opinion just it takes too much away from I, I don't want to say the believability maybe it is the believability but sometimes it it I, I don't feel like lots of Dalek dialogue works very well. It, it kind of, it just doesn't work for me. And to see them say sort of as little as possible and then just see their brutality or what they're, what they're capable of is much more effective. And I thought that having the last time the, the, the Daleks came back in their own episode, I, I did not like that episode very much. Uh, Victory of the Daleks. They were in, of course, uh, the Pandaric opens and, and uh, with the Big Bang, but uh, there was only one Dalek, and it, it was just there as uh, sort of a menacing creature, and it had a great, you know, back and forth with River Song. Um, and that also took this sort of minimalist approach to Daleks and Dalek dialogue, but this actually felt like a good Dalek episode, not just like, here's another villain that's we're gonna beat to death. And so proper use of, of Daleks in Doctor Who is important, and I think that this uh, goes down, in my opinion, as one of the best, if not the best, Dalek episodes. Although, um, I, don't, I, I wouldn't necessarily put it better than Genesis of the Daleks, or some of the... Um, some of the later, uh, like the 80s episodes, I thought were all fairly good. You know, uh, Peter Davison's episode, uh, even Colin Baker's ep Dalek episode, and Sylvester McCoy, all of them had good Dalek episodes. And I think that the Doctor shouldn't meet the Daleks too often. I'm kind of in agreement with Stephen Moffat on that one. So maybe I don't quite say this the best Dalek episode ever, but it was excellent, production quality excellent. Um, yeah, I don't know. Good, I'll give it... Uh, I, I hate coming up with scales and metrics. I would say out of 10, I would give it uh, a 9, a 9.5, maybe. One thing that I didn't quite understand in terms of continuity, though, was... Uh, first, I thought that the Seventh Doctor destroyed... This, you know, caused the Son of Scarrow to go Nova uh, with the Hand of Omega. And I would also imagine that Scarrow might have been a part of the Time War and locked in the Time War the way Gallifrey was, but uh, 
apparently, according to this episode, that's no, completely wrong. And I thought it was interesting that they brought back Scarrow, but on a continuity level, uh, not quite sure on that one.